Welcome to the Good News Program. I have a special guest today, all the way from Victoria, BC, Ray Jensen. Ray's got an exciting testimony of what God's done in his life. Ray, thanks for coming to share what God's done in your life. And I know today you're, uh, you're an accountant, a tax uh, preparations type of guy, but you weren't always there. So talk about where life began for you. Well, my, my life began actually in Saskatchewan, <laughs> okay. where uh, I was the youngest of 14 children. And uh, I'm very grateful that my father kept persisting to have me. <laughs> so yes. yeah. uh, out of that, uh, we, we grew up out here in the prairies. And I grew up in a traditional uh, environment of a traditional church. And uh, we uh, grew up on the farm. And uh, we were not poor, but we were not rich either. But we had all things because we all worked together and the, the land produced just about everything we needed. And so uh, I grew up in a, uh, a large environment of lots of activity and lots of family. And I used to joke that I had a degree in sociology before I left home. So <laughs> that was my beginnings. <laughs> and you realize, but you know, like you say, those large families, uh, they were self-sufficient. You know, you, you, you produced your own garden veggies, you can, you can fruit, you, everything, you know. We, we, uh, we, yeah, we all worked together and the garden was huge. We had five acres of potatoes and, and uh, I was the, the hiller and the, I, I loved machinery. So I ran the garden tractor as the youngest in the family. So I uh, took responsibility for that. Yeah, yeah, good, good. So you went to school there? Uh, yeah, I went to, went to school. We had a, a, a little country school. And uh, um, the, uh, it was good in the sense that we had all the grades all within one school. And so we weren't segregated by, you know, by age groupings. We had everybody in the same school. So you had the influence of the older people and you had to nurture the younger people through as you went through the grades. So uh, that was a good thing, I felt, in those kinds of schools. Today, they're all bunched together in grade threes, grade fours, grade fives. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, that was a blessing for me because I could watch older people grow up. You could also listen to the classes being taught in the next grade or two ahead of you. That's right. <laughs> if you wanted to advance, you could. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what was life like otherwise? Were you going to church at that time in your family? Or? Uh, yeah, we, we grew up in a traditional church and uh, I knew about Jesus, but I never had a relationship with him as a personal relationship. Uh, I, uh, I grew up as a performing mm -hmm. and I was performing for my mom and dad for the for the church for um, for grades and and I really became a performer yes and uh, it was really odd when uh, being the youngest in the family all of a sudden everybody left home and my nurturers were more my brothers and sisters than my mom and dad and so when they all left home, I was left at home sitting there with these two old people. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been an adjustment. <laughs> and I wanted to get out of Dodge. You know, I, I just wanted to get out of home. So uh, uh, I, I kind of, I didn't run away, but I, I went away and, and got a, a degree in business. And I thought I'm going to make my mark in, in business. And I uh, joined a company called Sun Life and I wanted to become Mr. Sun Life. And I, I, uh, uh, I learned all what they told me to do and sold a lot of life insurance. And in my first year, I became a million dollar round table producer. Wow. So uh, I was really happy about that and I clapped myself on the back and I thought I was somebody. But uh, at the end of the year, I don't know if you've been in sales organizations, but uh, December or uh, January 1st, they took all the pictures down and said, no, you got to go out and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my heart just fell. And I was really depressed that day. And uh, it was uh, odd that I, I uh, walked out and a fellow life insurance man said, uh, hey, Ray, why don't you come to a luncheon with me? I'll buy you lunch. And 
I was interested in a free lunch. And we ended up at a, a, a lunch where there was all these guys in business suits, like uh, most of us were in downtown, uh, that was in downtown Vancouver at that time. And uh, there was a guy there by the name of Michael Green, and he was speaking about Jesus. And I thought, well, I know Jesus. Uh, but at that meeting, he spoke in such a way as that my heart was pricked that I, I didn't know that I needed a savior. And my heart was pricked that day and uh, I fell apart and I cried like a baby and I knew that I, that I was walking away from God rather than to God. I thought my performance was pretty good, but it, it was a bunch of fluff. So you were uh, comforted in that you did all these things and, and that as a result you felt you were okay. You went to church, you did this, you... you know. In my performance, I yeah. thought I was a pretty good guy, yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, when, when Michael Green gave his testimony, and he's, I, I don't even remember what he said, he said something from the Bible, and, uh, uh, and that pricked my heart, and I knew that I needed to have Jesus come into my life to change me, because I couldn't change myself. I had tried that for quite a few years. <laughs> yeah. I, I think a lot of people have. I think a lot of people have. Yeah. So how did you do that? How did you change yourself? Uh, I didn't. <laughs> uh, after that meeting, I, I realized, or, or I realized I needed a savior, and uh, I was crying, and these other 30 guys were, were so happy that I was falling apart, yeah. and actually made me mad. <laughs> but uh, that day, I had a, an experience where Jesus came into my heart, and I now knew that I knew that I had a relationship with Almighty God through his son Jesus, which I had known about before, but I had never experienced. And as I experienced that, he began to grow in me. As the word says, he becomes a consuming fire. And uh, he started to consume those things that were anti or against him out of my life. And it's still going on. The furnace is still burning. <laughs> so what I'm hearing you say is that before this, you believed in Jesus. Yes. You believed in going to church. Yes. And I'm sure you probably believed, uh, prayed. Yes. But you didn't have that assurance inside of, of salvation. I did not have that, yeah, that blessed assurance as yeah. the song we sing, blessed assurance. So when, when you committed your life to Christ, that changed, just that simple prayer? That simple prayer, it, it changed my life. And then they, they talked about getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. And uh, I had been taught uh, religiously that that was of the devil and that, uh, you know, you had to have control of your life. And that was, most of us are taught that when you're in control, you're okay. And uh, I came into this environment where I wanted to have control and yet I had to give that control over to someone else whose name was Jesus and my trust level was not up there too high. <laughs> so I had to learn how to trust him and begin to turn more and more of my life over to him. And that's still an ongoing process for all of us, I guess. I, I think it is, Ray, I think it is. So did you eventually receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Uh, I wrestled with that. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of Dr. Word in, uh, in Vancouver and uh, again, my trust level was pretty low with uh, religionists and just about everybody. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought, well, you can trust the doctor. So I went to uh, Dr. Word and I, I explained that, you know, I didn't trust these guys. I thought, you know, this was, they were just putting on the dog. And uh, he said, well, Ray, let's go through the scriptures. And he, he took me through scriptures about the receiving of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was convicted at that point that this was of God. And when he had gone through all that, I, I began to, to weep a little bit. And then I said, uh, uh, he said, well, why don't you just uh, try it? And I said, well, I can try it and I can make up words. And he said, well, go ahead, make up words. <laughs> and uh, so I started making up words. And, you know, and I was kind of doing it in a mocking way. And then I, I felt like I was standing in a, a lightning where fire came down upon me. I began to sweat profusely and I started to sing. And I just sang for about 20 minutes in the spirit. Wow. And I, it was such a refreshing, 
woohoo. <laughs> it was so refreshing that I knew that I knew that this had to be the Holy Spirit. And that was my baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for it. And I thank Dr. Franz Word, who is up there with you now, Jesus. So, uh, so. He, he took the time with me and he was very patient and he didn't push anything. And that was how I received the baptism of so the Holy Spirit. All he did was explain the word to you. He, went, he showed you in scripture the, the factual basis for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when you had that word, when you had that teaching, you opened yourself up and asked God to give it to you and you received it. And I received it, yes. And, and in singing songs in tongues. And, yeah. in, and when it, it came down, it was Hallelujah, and I went on like that for 20, 20 minutes. And it was just, it, I, there was songs I didn't know about, but the, the music and the, and the words just yes. kept pouring yes. out. Yeah. And, and it, it was like I had been in a box all these years and now I was able to release this this uh, relationship that God wanted to have with me yes. but I had all this stuff over top of it this this uh, men's knowledge doctrines of men and doctrines of demons that had held me captive and once that opened up it it, it was wow I, I am loved I am appreciated by by not only people around me but by my Heavenly Father Yes. And when that connection was there, it, it's like when you in farming, you know, when you weld, yes. you, you, you strike the bead. There's a lots of lots of fire going on. But when that bead is laid down, you know that those things are welded together. Yes. And that's the way I felt after that uh, experience of singing in tongues. And since then, as Paul says, I pray in tongues. I, 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 I almost pray in tongues constantly under my breath. Yes. But there's times I do it verbally. <laughs> You have control. You can decide when you're going to pray in tongues or not pray in tongues or sing in tongues. You can turn it on or turn it off whenever you want okay. to. Okay. But uh, as Paul says in, I think it's in Romans, he says he prays in tongues more than anybody. Yes. And uh, we can always maintain that connection of communicating. Yes. Uh, yes. With the one who love, who is the lover of our soul. Yes. And uh, by doing that, we're, we're, we're keeping that channel open. And, uh, and he'll drop ideas into our hearts and to yes. our minds. Yes. He'll, he, he gives me comfort wherever I go. I know that I'm in his comfort. I'm in his protection. Yes. And there's no fear anymore because I'm experiencing that perfect love, which only he can give is perfect yes. love because most of us have been hurt by earthly love, haven't we? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or lack of personal yeah. love. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But when God loves us, it's an eternal love. He, he, he loves us unconditionally. Yes. And, and when I first came to the Lord and uh, I could feel that, especially in praise and worship, uh, I had grown up again, as I mentioned, in a traditional church where you sing songs and you may sing hymns, but you never, I've, I've never experienced worship. And when I got into that worship environment, I, I, I just, I still do it today when we have our meetings and, and worship starts. It, you just know that God's there. He yes. loves us yes. and he cares for us and he will never leave us. That's great. Now, when you, uh, let's go to praying in tongues. Do you understand what you're saying or praying in tongues? Uh, the words come up out of my spirit. I, I, uh, I, I don't understand it in the intellect, but there's an essence of what I know that, that that that's going on okay. and then he will maybe drop uh, the awareness of what I was praying into my heart yeah but sometimes it's just a release that my spirit wants to talk to daddy God and when that happens that's what happens so like you say you when you're praying in tongues you're actually praying to the Lord directly yes it, yeah, yeah yeah it bypasses the governor yes <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I don't know, most of us have, the governor tries to run everything. Yeah. And uh, that was my biggest issue because I wanted to control. Yeah. Because yeah. I felt controlled most of my life, yes. again, from a large family. Yeah. But, and I wanted to do that with somebody. I wanted to control somebody. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And now, so, uh, yeah. You, you touched on, uh, first of all, let's go back to salvation. Like, uh, that was a profound experience. And what are some of the major changes that, came to you or happened to you after you received the Lord as your Savior? 
Uh, after I received the Lord as my Savior, I, I learned, number one, that the Bible was God's Word. And when I learned that truth, that was significant because I knew then I could go to the Bible, read it for myself, and have the Holy Spirit tell me what those words said. I didn't need an interpreter to tell me. I didn't need anybody to tell me because I now had a new teacher. And especially when I read in, in John, 1 John, where it says that the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. And that was an anchor uh, scripture for me. And I would then pray in tongues, talk to God and say, well, here's something I don't understand, God. Will you show me what this means? Now, sometimes you get the answer immediately. Other times you may wait a few years to get some of the answers. And there's questions I have about the Bible that I have not had the answers yet. Like, when's the end of the world coming? We don't have that answer, right? <laughs> yes. But we know approximately. So, Ray, what I'm hearing you say is once you accept that the Lord is your Savior and your relationship with, you, with Him, uh, He actually guides you and directs you as you open yourself up and ask for His help. Is, am I hearing that right? It, it sure does. And the thing He helped me most with was my relationship with others and especially my relationship with my dearly beloved wife. Isn't that great? And uh, before that, I again wanted to control, and I, I was very controlling, and I tried to control her, and I tried to fix her. <laughs> 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 Which, as any of you know who have tried that, causes big trouble. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so I had to back right off, and God had to reteach me how to love. And love has got nothing to do with control, because God doesn't control us. He gives us free will. And I, I had to totally back off and learn how to love and learn especially how to love my wife. And that has been a journey. And wow, you know, we're, we're still experiencing the depth of what love is. And especially even between my wife and I, and it's been wonderful. And we have, do have four, four children, four daughters, and uh, six grandchildren, one on the way. That's great. So. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just amazing. You know, like you say, when you talk about the love, the coming to understand it. How do you understand an ocean of water? You know, like it's an ocean of love. Yeah. You, 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 you keep getting more and more. And it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You, you uh, told about how you experienced receiving it and that. What are some of the major, cha major changes that took place after you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Uh, well, the control issues, I had to, you know, I, I learned that I, I just had to let go mm -hmm. and to trust that, that God will guide me through. And it's, it's my anchor of life today that whenever uh, a circumstance or, or an issue arises, I immediately begin to speak in tongues in my spirit or get into a closet somewhere where I can do it privately. But uh, uh, God and his intimacy will show us how to come through every circumstance in life. And he even promises us that there's no circumstance that he will give us that we cannot come through. And with that, that gives us a confidence to walk through whatever the circumstance we have before us and that we can come through it. So the Holy Ghost to me is, is my best friend. And uh, he says he'll never leave me nor forsake me. You know, Ray, what I'm hearing you say is you're, well, you're talking about God as if you were a personal friend that uh, you can hear his guidance and direction from time to time as you seek his help. Is that what I'm hearing? Is yes, that that's uh, what you're hearing is right. That's terrific news. That's terrific news. Yeah. And he is our guide for life. I mean, it's, it's, uh, I, I don't know how people operate without the Holy Spirit. I and mean, when I think back on my life, that uh, it was all through calculation of mind and, and sort of organizing the facts and then you make a decision. Yes. Whereas this, you can still go through that process, yes. but now you've got the guide who has all knowledge, all understanding. He knows the beginning from the end who will now give you the infusion of life into making a decision. In our knower, we still not may know where we're going, but we know that what, what the path that's before us, that we cannot fail. That's what's so amazing. And it's like when God called Abraham, he took him out of his old circumstance and he said, come out of Ur into Canaan and I will make you a, a, a nation. 
and Abraham didn't even have a kid yet, and he was 100 years old, probably 75 when he came out, and yet by faith he walked out, and I learned how to believe because my God will provide. He is there, and, and nothing, 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 as Paul says, can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So, wow. I mean, how would we, why would we even try not to have that? You know? That's great, Ray. That's, that's really great. I mean, you've got that assurance. And I know we haven't talked about it, but I know many troubles have come your way, but you've, mm. been over, you've overcome them yes. with, with wisdom from the Lord and, and your own wisdom, but the Lord guides you and directs you through the fire. Am I accurate in that assumption? Without that, yeah. It, 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 he has guided us through all, all kinds of decisions that we've had to make uh, regarding our family and where to go. And even, even where to fellowship, you know, in, in your church environment. And if you're not being fed somewhere, go somewhere where you're getting fed. Even the cows know that, right? <laughs> if you're not getting fed in that pasture, go to the next pasture. <laughs> but some of us know I've been in this pasture for all my life. <laughs> yeah. Go where you get fed, right? <laughs> right, right. Now, Ray, I know that you've seen God move uh, as you've ministered in uh, prayer, I'm sure. Uh, you're very involved in the full gospel. You've been a pro you are our past president of the Victoria chapter. Yes. Uh, what are some of the things that you've seen God do as you and your, uh, your fellow members of the chapter have been praying with people or ministering? Yeah. Well, he, he, I've seen many healings uh, through our chapter, well, and, and through uh, just praying for people that God will, will touch people and I've seen legs grow out where, where people have had uh, uh, a shorter leg. I've seen that happen. Uh, one of our fellows has received his hearing back uh, at a, one of our meetings, just praying for him. And again, it's not about us, it's about God. God touching people because he loves us. He wants us to be whole. And, uh, and the biggest, one of the biggest healings was in my heart and in our marriage, because at one time I, wa I really wanted to get out of our marriage. I wanted out of it, but through him, he brought healing. And now we're, we're able to love one another. And we know that God will carry us through whatever. So yeah, God, without God, it's really difficult. That's a strong assurance. That really is, and you're right, that is the biggest miracle that, that he's changed your life totally from the yeah. inside out where you have a new outlook, a new compassion, new love yeah. to walk in. Uh, but I just want to touch a bit on those miracles. Did you say, did I hear you say uh, legs lengthening, one leg shorter than the other? Yes, we've seen that. And, and you've seen and them come we've out? We've seen them grow out, yeah. I, I haven't seen any uh, uh, creative miracles into like a new ear or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I've seen, as I said, somebody receive his hearing. And uh, there was uh, a one time when I've seen teeth that were changed, Amazing. that there were uh, gold, gold crowns on teeth that weren't there before. God, God put gold crowns on some teeth on that some weren't teeth. there before. That's right. There is a God. There is a God. No question about it. And uh, if anybody's in need today, and you're, yes. you're watching this because this is a divine appointment. Yes. And God is ever present. He's everywhere. Time means nothing to him. Yes. He was here now and he's here now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ray, I know there's people listening to this program, right? That identify with what you're saying, where you've been, where you've come from, mm. where there wasn't that relationship with the Lord. Could you look into that camera behind me here and help them to come into that experience of receiving the Lord as their savior? Okay. You know, just look into that camera, please. I was lost and I didn't even know it. And God loves us so much. He wants that all men would come to know him. And Jesus came to make the way back to the Father because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you're in that position today of coming into an awareness that something's missing in your life, it is so easy. All you have to do is say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I blew it and everybody has blown it. That's the word, everybody has blown it. And the way back is to invite the man, the God man who came to this earth to pay the price for sin, all sin, not just your sin, all sin. He paid the price for sin, that sin would no longer have power over us, 
that we could be made right with the Father through his son, Jesus. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry I blew it. Would you come into my life and take over the steering wheel of my life because I have blown it? And if you do that, and if you say that today, talk to somebody. Phone this number on the program. Talk to somebody to tell them that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And watch him work in your life. He will come in and he will redeem what the canker worm has eaten. He will remake your life anew and you will become born again and have rights to the kingdom. Thank you. Ray, if uh, God can change guys like you and me, <laughs> he can change anybody that's watching this program, can't Amen. he? You yes. know, if we just open them up and give them permission, like I found God to be a perfect gentleman. Mm. He won't barge into our lives unless we invite him. Amen. And so you just help people to invite Jesus into their life and uh, he's there for them. Amen. Yeah. Sometimes the most powerful prayer is I need help or just help. <laughs> help, help. <laughs> yeah. One prayer that my wife made, we were driving on a street in Victoria. Yes. And there was a truck coming and it was a sure accident. And I had the family in the car and I, I, I didn't have time to put on the brake hardly. And all she said was, Jesus! And we immediately stopped and I put on the brake. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so we stopped before I had my foot on the brake. Can you, wow. I mean, I believe that. Ray, we're out of time. Thank okay. you so much for taking time to share. Okay. That truly is a good report. That's good news. Yeah. Thank you again. Bless you. Bless you too. Thank you. Spirit.